Hello friends. In this video, we will discuss about feminization of agriculture. First of all, what is feminization of agriculture? It is increasing participation of women in agriculture because of farming becoming less remunerative and with the increase in male migration from rural to urban areas. And when was it pointed out? It was pointed out at national level when Economic Survey 2017 coined this term uh, and gave the data about it. So from there, it became part of national discourse as well as as part of the planning process for the government as well. So Economic Survey 2017-18 highlighted a growing trend of feminization in India's agriculture as more males are migrating from rural to urban areas women are increasingly taking multiple roles as cultivators, entrepreneurs, laborers in agriculture, also handling the uh, household work. So it is uh, enhancing the pressure on women living in the rural areas. Now we will analyze it sociologically, how, how this is impacting sociologically the women and in general scenario. So the first of all, we need to understand is that the land ownership is highly gendered in the country when the land ownership is highly gendered so when the women will want to exercise any right they will not be able to do so because of the lack of land ownership also to have certain kinds of benefits schemes policy many a times you need to showcase that you have the loan uh, land uh, ownership or not so it hinders the decision making process the first dimension is this Second uh, dimension which I want to talk about is that there is also entrenched gender norms. The, the concept which was given by uh, the, the study which was con uh, conducted in Shamir Pate as well as the uh, study conducted by Leela Dubey was that women in Indian society is confined in the four walls of the home. And when they step out, out of the home and want to exercise their uh, wish and uh, here too there is not even the wish they, they have the compulsion to take the roles still they have to face the discrimination still they have to face the burden of gender norms and that restricts women mobility decision making authority and participation in agricultural activities they are not allowed to move freely affecting their access to market agricultural resources so all of these happens because of this. The third and the big barrier is the, the literacy gap. If you see the literacy gap in the rural men and women, it is far more. And when you are seeing uh, states like Bihar, when you are seeing states like Uttar Pradesh, when you are uh, seeing states like uh, Chhattisgarh or any other state which is not so developed, there, the literacy gap between men and women in the rural area is even more. And because of lack of literacy of women, they are not having enough education and uh, uh, know-how of agriculture extension services, agriculture schemes. And now this is further making their life miserable or to exercise uh, their uh, full potential also. There is a barrier in it. The next thing is, uh, because of the lack of land ownership, there's a lack of exercise of legal rights by the women. And as I had told about uh, this in the uh, previous lectures, uh, previous slides as well, that because of lack of land ownership, they are not able to become beneficiary of many of these schemes, whether it is soil health card, whether it is uh, uh, the... Um, Sampada Yojana, whether it is about uh, the uh, insurance, every other thing or the extension services or the e portal or any kind of agriculture scheme which is running uh, in, in the country, they are unable to uh, exercise that. And that has been studied by Bina Agarwal. The study of Bina Agarwal is, uh, 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 is of 1993, but still relevant. She says that a... Uh, she identifies several factors constraining women, women's legal rights. The first is uh, patrilocal post-marital residence. So women has to move from their home to some uh, to other resident, uh, uh, residence, to the residence of uh, 
his her husband and that that imposes a lots of restriction in some areas they are not even allowed to uh, to show their face they have to keep a long hunger and all of these uh, imposes a lots of restrictions on them also uh, she identifies one of the issue is uh, also village exogamy village exogamy means that they have to necessarily go to a place where she is completely new again uh, a, a restriction on her and also uh, opposition to a uh, mobility from men because men uh, does not want to uh, provide them the kind of mobility or ownership it will then uh, try to hit the masculinity of the rural men specifically the men who are the elder ones who are the so called head of the uh, the house so this was the study of the bina agrawal which you can quote when there is any question on feminization of agriculture but there is a positive side the positive side was also given by bina agrawal and many other uh, the feminists that if there is inclusion of women in agriculture there may be enhance in sustainable farming practices there can be more eco friendly approaches uh and there can be enhanced crop diversity this is one of the uh, approaches of eco feminism as well that women are the ones who are uh, are themselves the nurture so they are uh, close to nature they are also the ones if there is environmental degradation they are the ones who have to face the burnt more so they are they have deployed a certain methods through which environment is maintained so if their inclusion is in agriculture there will be enhance in organic farming say for example there are lots of uh, women farmers uh, who have been awarded for uh, uh, the organic farming by the government of india they have the, the specifically the roles of self help groups becomes prominent in this Uh, so that they are uh, impart to take uh, part in agriculture in uh, in in their full capabilities so it's extremely important to impart self help groups and that's why the government has taken so many steps and it is extremely important uh, bina agrawal has again highlighted uh, this that it's extremely imp- important to provide them access to credit you know access to uh, good agricultural inputs extension services this needs to be educated about it uh, there is a, a good uh, initiative by the uh, bihar government jivika scheme in bihar it mobilized over 2 lakh women small farmers into commu- uh, commodity based fpos farmer producer organization and it achieved significant higher turnover and successful market grains fruits and vegetables in some cases returns have increased by 20 to 30% so this is one of the best practice which you can quote even in the sociology answer as a positive light as a conclusion and uh, also in general studies 3 or if there is a question on general study 1 this is one of the good best practice which you can quote this question uh, this question content can be utilized at many other places as well when you are talking about work and economic life when you are talking about the entitlement of women in the patriarchal structure at 20 marks question again you can utilize this content in that question the art of uh, maximizing is, your score does not lie in maximizing your resources the art of scoring more marks in sociology lies in understanding things deeply and utilizing one thing at many places thank you very much take care best wishes